what's up YouTube my name is mr. Kyle Cohen thank you so much for clicking on my YouTube channel and today's video today's July 21st we are about halfway through the summer a little over halfway through the summer and I thought it would be the perfect time to sit down and reflect on where we are thinking about where we are going. There are so many reasons why I decided to create a YouTube channel and why I decided to create a YouTube channel now. But what is most on my mind is thinking about the upcoming school year and how it is about to be unlike anything any of us teachers, educators, people have ever experienced. We are living through a global health pandemic, a global health crisis. We have never experienced anything quite like this before, or at least in a remarkably long time. Having the opportunity to document this upcoming school year and experience will be something I know I will want to have because again, we've never done this before. There is still so much unknown. We don't know what the end of August, the beginning of September is going to look like. We are in a very fluid situation. Everything is day to day. And I will share what we know now in terms of what's going on in Ohio and our context versus so many other states here in America. Some of our more populous states like California and Texas and Florida have made decisions already about the upcoming school year. So many different districts and states and cities have made the decision that they will stay 100% virtual 100% digital in the upcoming school year. That means what started for most of us mid to late March will continue for an unknown amount of time, depending on how the virus um, develops over the next however many months. And then there's other cities and districts that have decided that we're going back based on the context of what's going on, we're returning to classrooms. Students can no longer not be in classrooms. And then there's some buildings and some schools that are in between, that there's this hybrid. We're gonna be doing a little bit of the remote distance stuff and a little bit of the in-person stuff. And that's a huge spectrum. And it totally depends on what's going on in the city. It totally depends on what's going on in the state. But it also has become such a huge political issue. We are seeing certain governors, certain officials making decisions based on politics, not based on science, not based on the research, and not what's actually out there. And that leaves so much of us in this space of unknown, because we don't actually know what it's going to be like to get back into school. We don't actually know how it's going to work to have students and teachers and families and community members exposed indoors at school. This summer, we have seen, at least in the state of Ohio, a huge climb in cases. So many people in the state of Ohio are ignoring physical distancing, they're ignoring wearing masks, and because of that, we have seen an upward swing in cases. We have seen this huge climb in cases in the state of Ohio, as opposed to where we have come from. In March, when we totally locked everything down, the cases dropped. We, we saw a huge spike, and then we saw it taper off. As people started to get together and resume their typical life, we've seen a huge huge upswing in cases, and that's with most people remaining outdoors. There are patios and bars and restaurants where people are outdoors, and these cases are climbing. We don't know what it's going to look like when we get indoors, when we get into a classroom. The state of Ohio has also broken down the virus into four main categories, four main levels based on how critical your county is handling measures, is seeing cases, and is mostly looking at how things are going in your specific county. So for example, the county I live in might be on a certain level when another county is on another one, and a lot of school districts are taking measures based on the current situation of the county. And I'm gonna break that down a little bit for you right now. So I want you to ignore my handwriting here. I want you to uh, just let's focus on the picture for a minute. We have yellow, which is known as level one. We have orange, which we're calling level two. We have red, which we are calling level three. And we have purple, which we are calling level four. And a lot of districts are making decisions based on what level that their state is in. This level one is very few measures are taking place. Basically, this would just mean go about your normal life, level one. Level two, we're wearing masks, six feet, those sorts of things. So that would be level two. Again, we're wearing masks, six feet, and this level four, which is lockdown. 
That's where we were in March. As of right now, there are many counties in this orange space throughout the state of Ohio. There are many counties in this red space throughout the state. And these different levels are going to determine what the action is going to look like in the fall for schools. So I hope that my poorly constructed diagram helped paint a picture of some of the possibilities for the fall, but I'm going to now pull up my computer and show you um, a few other things. So different districts are making different decisions based on these levels, based on level one, level two, level three, and level four. So what I'm gathering from so many of these different schools throughout the state of Ohio is that the level that their school is on in their county is going to determine what the decisions are. If we are at a purple level four, it will be 100% remote learning. If we are at at a yellow level one, it will be 100% in school. And then that orange and red is going to be a hybrid model type of situation. So again, it's very fluid. We're not going to know until we are really close to the start of the school year, which is end of August, beginning of September, which is still undecided. So we're left just waiting. I'm also hearing a lot about two different options for families as we approach the upcoming school year. Option number one, if you have a family member, perhaps with a, a underlying health condition, or you're just uncomfortable with sending your child back into the classroom, there will be an option for 100% distance learning that will continue throughout the fall semester, where families are able to opt in to providing their child with a 100% distance learning experience. And then there's the other option, which is regardless of what level we're on, whether it's one, two, three, or four, you're going to be sending your child. Obviously, if we're on level four, then you won't be sending your child because 100% of us would be online. But if one, two, or three, if we're on one of those levels, your child will be going to school. And that's a choice that you're making as a family member. To that extent, I think it's great. I think it's amazing that family members have the opportunity to make a choice, even though this choice is so challenging. There are so many factors when it comes to your income, your ability to watch your child. Do you feel like it's safe to send them? We just don't know. We don't know what is safe right now because we've never done this before. But to some extent, I think it's great. I think it's great that family members get that choice for their child about what they're going to be doing for the upcoming school year. It's in their hands. It's in your hands what you are doing. And the burden is not being placed on teachers and administrators to make that decision for you. What about our teachers and staff? We're sending these folks into schools and we don't know what's going to happen. I believe that this is not an if. It's not what is going to happen if a student or family member or staff member comes down with the virus. It's when. When are we going to be impacted? How are we going to handle it? What is the protocol, the procedures, the steps in place? These are the questions that I'm excited to see get answered over the coming weeks. As we start to approach end of July, beginning of August, I, I start to get really excited. I, I start to think about what my classroom's going to look like, what engaging lessons I'm gonna come up with, what new classroom management procedures and systems have I thought of, have I researched? I'm usually watching tons of YouTube videos. I'm reading a lot of books. This year is different. There isn't so much that I can be doing right now because again, we don't know what the fall is going to look like. If we're 100% virtual, my approach is very different from if we're 100% in person. In my 1,000 subscriber Q&A, someone asked me, hey Kyle, are you more excited or nervous for the upcoming school year? In that video, I said I was excited. I am so excited. I am so excited to be starting a new job at a new school in a new district. I am so excited to interact with kids, whether that is in person, whether that is online. I am so excited for that. I cannot wait to be with students. It has been so long. I miss being with kids. I'm excited. But I'm also really nervous. Not necessarily nervous for my health, even though there are instances where people my age are getting horribly impacted by this virus, and I am taking everything really seriously. So I'm not necessarily nervous for me. I'm nervous for my future students. I'm nervous for their families. I'm nervous for my coworkers. I'm nervous for our community. What's going to happen when someone gets diagnosed with this virus? What are we going to do? Are we taking the right amount of risk sending kids back into schools? I, 
I just don't know. As someone who aspires to be a school leader, as someone who aspires to be a systems-wide level leader, I have so much respect for the people who are making our decisions right now. They are in a really difficult and challenging place when it comes to deciding what the upcoming school year is going to look like, when it comes to what the upcoming school year is going to look like for so many kids, for so many families, for so many communities, and I don't envy the decisions that they have to make. But I know that what we need to be doing is we need to be thinking critically about the health and safety of our students. I was listening to a podcast last week that was talking about the social emotional it benefits for students to be in classrooms. Students need to be with their own peers. Students need to get out of the house to experience conversations with peers their own age. They need to be learning in a classroom. And I deeply believe at my core that the right place for kids to be learning is a classroom. But with that being said, a pandemic classroom, a physically distant classroom, a socially distant classroom, we don't know what those effects are going to be on a child when it comes to their social and emotional well-being. We don't know what the impacts of wearing a mask will have on a child in the long run. We don't know how teachers wearing masks and kids sitting far apart and not being allowed to talk to your friends, not being able to sit next to your friends in the cafeteria, have those conversations, give your teacher a hug, all of those things, being afraid. We don't know what those impacts are going to be either. As we embark on the upcoming school year, as we start to think about what it's going to look like, regardless of our context, my hope for both myself and us educators in this community is that we're being flexible. We're remembering our why. We're remembering why we stepped foot into classrooms to begin with, why we wanted to form amazing relationships with students, why they need us to be there for them. Our students are going to need us now more than ever. We have the opportunity to make such a transformative impact during such a pivotal time in our country's history. I know it's going to be challenging. I know it's going to be difficult. I know we're going to have to be flexible, but we can do it. We're going to do it and we're gonna do it together. I'm really grateful for each and every one of you who has taken the time to subscribe to this channel, who has left comments and feedback on these videos so far. I'm looking forward to documenting this experience throughout the school year, sharing my experience, what's going on, and my reflections along the way. I so appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.